All right, I want to start this video off by saying that I think this video will be of interest to a lot more people than those that work in the research or healthcare field like I do. Anybody interested in data and coding might find this interesting as well. Clinicaltrials.gov is a database of privately and publicly funded clinical trials conducted around the world. You can get tons of detailed information about a wide range of clinical trials. And so what we're going to do is we're going to get a big data set. And I'm not joking here. Look at this. This is only a fraction of the stuff you can get. So we got like the whole abstract, we have keywords, a title, all this stuff right here. We're gonna create a data set. I'm gonna show you how to do it. And honestly, it's not that bad. Even if you've never coded in your life, you can do this, really. I really think you can do this. Now, if you use clinicaltrials.gov before, you might be wondering, okay, why do you need to do a video that shows you how to download clinical trials data? After all, you can just do this like I'm doing here. Well, first of all, this isn't all the data that you can get. Uh, for example, there's a brief summary and there's a detailed summary, and detailed summary is not in here. And so we would need a way to get data like that. Uh, there's some other stuff that that's not in here as well. Now, clinicaltrials.gov has an API, and I've used it before, and it's great. But as you can see here, the current API is going to retire soon. I have a method I use that parses JSON or XML files, and I like this method a little better. I think it's a little more straightforward. I will give you the code, though, for the API if you want. But yeah, I think you might like this one a little bit better. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started and I'll show you how I did this. All right, so you're at clinicaltrials.gov and you want to do a search. So I'm going to search for diabetes as my condition here. And I'm interested in diabetes with uh, women, for example. Give a somewhat targeted search here and I'm going to hit the search button. And these are my results here. So I have uh, you know, 2,673. I'm going to click on JSON as the format I want to download. And you want to click on all. Now, if you have over 10,000, I'll get to that later, um, but that's the max you're gonna get here. So hit download of the JSON files, and now we're gonna download the CSV. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get all this data from the CSV, and we're only gonna parse from the JSON the things that we can't get from here. Go ahead and download these. All right, and let's go ahead and put those in our directory. And so likely this is gonna be in your downloads folder. So go ahead and cut and paste, and you wanna move it into your directory. So there we go. All right, let's check out this CSV file. This is all information we don't have to get from that JSON file because it's already here. So I personally don't see the value in trying to get it when it's right here. Uh, that unique identifier I highlighted right there, that's what's gonna link the CSV and data we get from the JSON file. We're gonna merge those and then we're gonna have everything into one data set. So I'm gonna unzip this as well into my directory and that might take you a couple minutes. I sped this up for you. Uh, we're gonna go through each one of these JSON files, get the data, Merge it with the CSV and bam, that's how we do it. Let's go ahead and create a new Python file and let's get started coding here. So go to file, new file, after you've opened the Python icon there and go ahead and save it to the directory uh, of your JSON files. So you can name this whatever you want. It's not gonna affect anything. This is just what I'm naming it. And let's get right into it. So I'm gonna import a few modules that we need. The only one that we need to check we need is called pandas that's gonna handle our data. And so we wanna to go to the command prompt, type in pip install pandas if you don't have it, and then it should all work just fine. And just to be clear, the JSON and OS modules, they come with Python standards, so you'll be good. Okay, all right, we're gonna create a list called data list and that's where all our JSON data is gonna go. Right now it's empty, but that's where it's gonna go. And now we want to loop through our directory and we want to find all of our JSON files. This is where that OS module comes in. We're going to look for all JSON files in our folder and, and we're going to parse through them. The first thing I like to do though is I like to just kind of print this file path and make sure that it actually works. I have over 2,000 files here, so I don't need to wait for it to show me all of them. As you can see, there's a ton there. So what you can do is just X out once you're pretty confident you got them and then you're good. And then you can just take out that print part there. And let's start going through these JSON files. Now, before we get too into this, I wanna show you what a JSON file looks like. And this can look a little bit scary and I have an alternative if this is just too much for you, but essentially these are just a bunch of nests. So you can see protocol section right there, identification module, and then we got our NCT ID right there. That's that unique identifier that we really wanna get so we can link the data sets. And so that's essentially how it works here. You just go through these nests and these sort of sub nests and you get the data that you want. And that's what we're doing in our code. If you prefer something more like an XML file, this is maybe less scary. Um, I have some code that'll do essentially the same thing, but with XML files, and I'll provide that, so don't worry. Okay, let's go back to our code. All right, so you can see the json.low, we're using that JSON module right there, and this is us just parsing these nests right here, just like I showed you a second ago how it works, so. These are just a fraction of the fields that you can get, but like I said, we have so much in the CSV file already. 
And so things we need, we need that NCT ID, showed you that. We want a detailed description. That is not in the CSV file, so we got to grab that as well. Sometimes the detailed description is shorter than the shorter one for some strange reason in clinical trials of GUP, so just watch out for that. Now with the principal investigator or the PI, they're usually under this overall official section. Sometimes they're under a responsible party or a an additional PI section. It's really strange, it's not consistent. So we have a mechanism, if it's missing in overall officials, check the responsible party section. If not that, check the additional PI section. And if it's not there, we're just gonna make it blank because sometimes it is blank. And you'll get the URL of the posting so you can actually manually check to see if something went wrong or maybe you screwed up something. All right, we're gonna go ahead and add this new section here, as you can see, and this is where we're gonna add all this data that we extracted from our data list that we made earlier that was empty, and now we're gonna just add it all there. And so those are the fields that we want right there, just these five right here. Like I said, so much is already in that CSV file, and when we merge it, we're gonna have all these other data too, but you could add more if you wanted to. All right, this next section might be more familiar to those that use Python. So we're making our JSON data set a data frame. And so that's what's going on right there. All right, so we're gonna import that CSV file that we got. You can see the name of it there, the CTG dash studies at CSV. We're going to also import that as a separate data frame. And just to give you an idea, let's look at this one more time. You can see all the files there. And let's open this up here just to kind of look at it one more time before we start to merge it. And so that NCT ID, that is so key. And so we're getting those from those JSON files and we're merging it by that. That's the unique identifier. That's going to tie all this together. Okay. We're going to rename it so it's exactly the same. Uh, one is labeled differently than the other. It's just, it's easier. You don't have to do that. I just think it's easier. So anyway, we'll have to save that. Let's go ahead and merge these now. That's the next thing we want to do. That's the magic. All right. So you can see how this works. We have the DF underscore JSON. That's our first data frame. That's what gets everything from those JSON files. And the DF CSV, that's from that CSV file. And on, that's the unique identifier uh, that we're going to combine them with. So that NCT underscore ID. Now that they're the same, that's going to be easy. And left, that's like the left join we're doing. So we want to make sure we get all of those files from the JSON data set. All right. And the last thing we want to do is we want to export it. And so let's do it. We can export it to CSV or Excel. I'm going to do Excel just for fun. People are more comfortable with that, I feel like. And if you get an error like this, that's pretty common with CSV files. What you do here is you just create uh, a different type of encoding. Um, so I'm going to put UTF-8. That will typically work. You will you can try Latin 1. There's a couple other ones that will work too. Uh, but basically, it'll interpret certain characters that by default it would have difficulty doing. So why don't we have a look and let's see what happened. Okay, moment of truth here. And there we go. You can kind of tell the format. So the CSV had a uh, proper case and I have all lowercase. I just like to do that. So you can kind of see that, yes, it did indeed merge. So that's great. Now, some trials are going to be missing the detailed description. They're just going to have that brief description. That's totally normal. Sometimes the investigator or PI is missing. Also normal. You can click on the link and you can kind of investigate what happened there. So um, we'll look for the principal investigator. Yep, no information provided. So we know that this is good. We didn't do anything wrong. It just wasn't there. And you can check other stuff like that too. All right, so if you want XML files instead or you need more than 10,000 trials, do this. This is what I do. I'm sure there's a better way, but this is just what I do. Go to the classic website. All right, let's type in uh, something super broad so we get a ton of results. Let's just type in heart disease. All right, so we got more than 10,000 results. That's great. So go to download here. And so if we had less than 10,000, you know, you can do all available columns, XML, and bam, you can get your XML files like that. But we have more than 10,000. So what you do is you go right here to download the XML for all public study records in our database. So you go right here. And this is it right here. So you want to highlight this, right click, copy, and then you put it in here and you download it. So really briefly, I'm not going to describe this in detail. I'm going to put this in the video description, but this is the API code I have right here. So basically what we're doing is we're searching for the title and we have two keywords here, diabetes and A1C. We're going to search for titles that have that. You can do a lot more filtering 
than this. You can do dates, you can do lots of things, and you can just loop forever. Um, but you are limited in the number of results that you can get in requests. So that's one reason you might want to just go for the huge 2.5 gigabyte data set of XML files and just have your way with it. So just wanted to show you this. Let me know if you have questions though. So anyway, I hope you found this video helpful. Hopefully you researchers and non-researchers and healthcare people all found it useful. In the meantime, thank you for watching and subscribing and take care everyone. Okay.